You guys excited about this panel and our guests? All right, let me hear you make some noise for them while I bring them out. Please welcome Bryce Pappenbrook and Veronica Taylor. How has your uh, your con experiences been so far? Yeah, you're it's awesome. been awesome. Amazing people. It's been fantastic. Getting to interact a lot with the uh, with the, the con goers, the locals. The locals. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's been really great. And uh, plus, we've had some time to explore Harrisburg a little bit. The architecture is so beautiful here. The food's amazing. The people are even more amazing. It's been great. The convention's awesome. Did you eat chocolate yesterday? I did indeed. <laughs> Doesn't everyone eat chocolate? You smell it, you eat it. I'm only talking about chocolate, so. <laughs> um, yeah, we went to Chocolate World last night after Down the show. Hershey. Yeah, my daughter and I. Um, it was pretty awesome. I did. I did take a photo with gigantic pieces of chocolate, like the huge Rolo and the gigantic Hershey bar, and the, yeah. So I'll post that later. That's, that, it was funny. We didn't buy it, though. <laughs> you we didn't take that home? No. It, it, luckily for me, it won't fit in my suitcase. So um, it, It's been a long time since I've been to Chocolate World, and I'm only two hours up the road. So Yo, it's, dude, it's free. I know. Just go. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you take the ride, you get a chocolate. I know. I, mean, I, I need to do it more often. Yeah, hello. Yeah, I might even do it on my way home, actually. We almost today. did it again just to get another Hershey bar. <laughs> I'm just saying, because the line to buy stuff was long. I, I think that, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's actually an opportunity you can go and like get your name on a big chocolate bar. Yes. So, which I've never done, so maybe I... And you can create your own chocolate bar. It, this is really just a whole ad for Hershey's. It's just, yeah. It's a Hershey panel. Sponsored by Hershey's. Hershey's. Yeah, and maybe tomorrow we might go by the Crayola factory on the way home. So, I mean, this is a big weekend for me. Well, let's talk about the convention. Yeah. Let's Harrisburg talk, Comic Con. Let's awesome. talk about you guys at the convention. All right. I think that's what everybody here is... They want to talk about you guys. Between the two of you, astonishingly over 200 projects, voices from video games to audiobooks, obviously, animation, film. Yeah. And that's, it's incredible, especially for somebody like me who's always been interested in doing any kind of voice acting or anything like this. I enjoy being behind the microphone. It's one of the reasons why I do this. But you guys are actually doing something I have always wanted to do. So it's actually a real pleasure for me to be up here and talk to you guys about this. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So I'm curious, and I'm sure some of the people in the audience are too, how, is, how do you get into something like that? Is it, was it something that you pursued being in front of the camera and then you just fell into voice acting? Or was voice acting something you always wanted to start with? Watch us give two totally different answers. <laughs> Because I don't know if there's one real answer to this. No, like, I don't think so either. Everyone kind of creates their own way into the industry or kind of falls into the industry a different way. Um, so like for me, my dad was a voice actor. Um, he was working on Power Rangers. Have you guys heard of that? Oh, really? Um, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I guess I haven't told you this. Oh, I'm really um, interested. Tell us more, Bryce. So uh, my dad played a bunch of monsters. Uh, one of oh. the characters he played was Rito Revolto, the yeah, skeleton well, dude. So I was watching him work. I was about eight years old, and uh, they needed a kid's voice. And my dad's like, he's a kid, throw him in the booth. Yeah. <laughs> and then I became a voice actor. Interesting. Yeah, yay, child labor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, it's fun. I'll take the money. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take the money. As your dad would say. Yeah. <laughs> Does he just talk like this all the time? <laughs> I mean, he... A little bit. I will never sound like him. Like, there's not enough cigarettes and whiskey in the world to make my voice <laughs> as deep and resonant as my dad's voice was. You should was. go the chocolate route. The chocolate route. <laughs> that might help. Like chocolates yeah. with the liqueur inside. Ooh. Maybe that's the way to get to be more like your dad. Yeah. <laughs> um, I started acting when I was five. I was in my first play. And, um, and then I, you know, did a lot of stuff. I played soccer. I did a lot of plays. And then I went to college and grad school for acting. I toured the U.S. with a number of acting companies. Um, gosh, I just did a lot of that. I, I've never set out to be a voice actor. I've set out to be an actor. I, I've trained in everything. I've done the Batman stunt show, or, you know, whatever. So I moved to New York, and the way I got into... My first voiceover gig was the Batman stunt show. I did the voiceover for that, and I also was the MC of the show. 
And then um, in New York, I had a recommendation from an acting coach to do an anime, uh, which was just being in the right place at the right time, because I had been working on a monologue for something, um, and someone had just happened to call him that day to say, can you recommend anyone? And so from that, I think networking plays a big part in all of our work. And I was cast in something there, and then they asked me to audition for something else, and then things just kind of moved on in a connected way from there. But my career is not just cartoons or not just audiobooks, it's everything. I worked on a soap opera, I've done theater, some TV, um, English as a second language, audio workbooks, I do all kinds of language programs, I do all kinds of things. So uh, I think the important takeaway from my weird life is that um, if you want to be an actor, you want to be able to do everything because you don't know what opportunities are going to come your way. And you can't just say, I just want to work on cartoons because there's just not that much work in a way. You have to be prepared to do everything. Um, and I worked, I volunteered a lot, reading for the blind. I've done a lot of things that gave me a lot of experience and have kind of woven themselves into this tapestry I call my career. Um, much like an Amish quilt, because we're in Pennsylvania. Um, anyway. So a lot of versatility is your say. If anybody who wants to get into any kind of career in, in, in the IP arts. Or anything like I that, mean, if yeah. you want to be an artist, you still want to be able to do Photoshop and you want to be able to paint and you want to be able to do everything, not just, I, I want to be an artist, but I'm only going to draw with a pencil. Mm -hmm. Because you can't, there's just not enough work in just that area. Totally true. Yeah, you've got to cast your net out as wide as possible yeah. and kind of see what comes back. Right, and what your talents are. Use everything. I mean, we all, as human beings, are so creative, but we tend to limit ourselves in a way because how will I pay the bills? What am I going to do this? I'm so busy with whatever. And you want to be able to make sure, I like to think of it as packing your suitcase with, with as many talents as possible. Um, I played soccer growing up, and that feeds into my stage combat, which feeds into my doing action scenes as a voiceover person. So all of that, who thought or who knew that soccer would still play a part in my life? You know what I mean in terms of, and that, and I'm not a professional soccer player yet. <laughs> there's still happening. Yeah, there's, more, say, there's still time. There's, there's more opportunities for it. women now. Yeah, but anyway. absolutely. Um, but so, you know, you want to just, you really want to pr press yourself in as many directions as possible anyway. I think because, again, as human beings, you feel more fulfilled and you have a, a better life when you're as, as creative as you can possibly be, I think. That's a great answer. I, that's, um, it's the chocolate talking. It's, well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bryce, I know that you have, I was looking at your list of accolades too, and I was looking to see if you've ever done anything on camera before, rather than the, the voiceover work. And I saw one project that you have coming up. Um, I gotta check my note, the, uh, the Confessionals. Confessionals, yes. And I love the name of your character is Reese Babinflot. <laughs> I wonder how they came up with that. I don't know, name. yeah. It's, it's very similar to another name that I know. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about that, because that seems very interesting. So, Confessionals is a web series that I'm a part of, and um, actually the creator of the web series is Jeremy Lee's husband. Um, and he was joining us at a convention, and um, Jeremy, if, if you haven't met her, has a bunch of really interesting convention stories, and she was just telling this story, and we, we were cracking up, and John said, someone should write a show about this, and Jeremy and I looked at each other and were like, do it, yeah. and he did, and we threw a Kickstarter, and we got funded, and we shot this thing at a convention in Sacramento, um, and also in LA and in Dallas, and it releases on Monday. Um, well, that's so, good timing then. Yeah, right yeah, yeah, now. What a perfect question. Yeah, so there you thank go. you. Um, so it's all about. Uh, it's it shot like The Office, and it's about voice actors going to a convention and the crazy stuff that happens to them. Um, and my character is is Reese Babinflock. Um, he is like a nicer version of me, and he wears a hat. Um, that's which, how you know it's Reese, don't. which I never yes. wear a hat. So obviously that's not me, that's Reese. Um, and yeah, it's a really fun series. Uh, I just got to see it back all edited and cut and, and done, and it turned out fantastic. So I highly recommend checking it out. I really didn't know the timing of that either. I didn't know it was releasing tomorrow. So I, that that's actually was perfect timing yeah, for bringing yeah, that up. Seriously. That's a good coincidence. 
Uh, getting back to the con a little bit too, I know you guys have done the con circuit for a little while. I'm curious because it's never anything I'm ever going to experience, but what's it like when you go to these conventions and you get to see the people that come up to your table or in the panel, like, panel audience actually cosplaying as the characters that you are voicing? Like these characters that you're helping to bring life to. I'm curious, what's it like for you personally when you see these characters come up to you? I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's amazing. Also that people have spent so much time making their costumes and putting so much thought into it. Really, we just had to kind of get into the head of the character. They have to get into the whole outfit. Yeah. So it is pretty neat. When I first started doing cons and saw uh, some of my characters being cosplayed, I would always run up to the person and take a picture. <laughs> but like, like after I had like my phone filled up with pictures of people in cosplay, I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't be doing this every single time. <laughs> like it was just right. taking too long. Um, but it's it's. I think of it as like a voice actor's applause when someone's doing that, um, because we record by ourselves in a booth, and you're in a very like professional setting, so you don't really get a reaction from the people on the other side of the soundproof glass. Um, but at a convention, people come up and say, "Oh, that line that you did was awesome or funny or you know whatever the reaction was," um, and and it's kind of cool, like. You don't realize when you're recording that people will actually see this stuff. Right. Um, so now it's it's like validation. You know, it's it's that applause. So it's it's amazing. Do you ever have people come up to you and, and give them give you their impression of a character that you do? Yes, definitely. Or I mean, Pokemon. Most people like to do their Pokemon, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. I don't do any Pokemon voices. I do a couple, but not impressions of. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I like to hear everyone's voices or their Ash voice too. A lot of my characters just scream, <laughs> so I, I have people just come up and scream in my face, and then ask me to scream in their face, and it's great. So different from real life. <laughs> I, I want to open it up to the audience, if anybody in the audience has any questions at any point. We actually have a microphone set up over here to the side. Uh, if you're welcome to line up at any time to ask uh, them a question, please feel free to line up and we, we can get to the questions as we see you up there. Uh, I'm curious. Um, you, you know, you mentioned being in the soundproof booth and, you know, you're bringing, you know, voice life to the characters. How much input do you have when a character is created that you're asked to voice? How much input do you have going into the personality that you put behind the, the, the character? Do they give you what you need or, or do you have a lot of freedom when it comes to that? It depends. Some shows really want you to stay true to what the Japanese actors did, and you kind of have to use that as a guideline. Mm -hmm. Some directors really want to push you to do that, and sometimes directors and producers are like, whatever you come up with that's fun and right for this character, go ahead and do it. Um, so I worked on a, a show called Blood Lab. Um, I play this oh. otaku <laughs> vampire mob boss, and day one of recording, the producer came in and said, so that script. Don't even worry about that. Whatever sounds good, whatever's funny, you guys have fun with this. So I improv lines into the anime, and it made it all the way through. Um, there's a moment in, in one of the fights where he elbows this guy, and he just goes flying. And right before the elbow, I go, finish him. And that made it all the way into the show. Um, so, I mean, it's really fun to be able to do that, but you, you're not always able to. Yeah, yeah I find most times they have a very specific idea of what they want and um, and then you just have to try to fill it as best you can um, yeah I, I there's also there are though so when you come in for a major role it's that way but there's always something while you're there oh can you do this voice or this voice and that's usually you just coming up with something so if you have a small side character um, usually you have a little more input okay. in a way yeah, most of the time there's no preparation also. No. Like, you'll get a call, hey, can you come in and work on Monday? And you go, what am I working on? And they hang up before they answer. Yeah, and so, you, you see the script for the first time when you get there. So it's yeah. a lot of cold reads when you guys oh, get into the studio. Practically all of it, really. yeah. Yeah, and, and even if you've seen a show, you've never seen those words before, because they don't right. give you the script beforehand. So it, you really just live in the moment and come up with that on the spot. Yeah. Which also makes it difficult to remember what you did even right when you finish, because you're just in the moment. And so you're not really thinking it through like, oh, this is really funny, and if I build here, maybe we can add that in later. You don't have that gift to know what's coming up. So you're just playing it, and hopefully the director knows what's coming up. 
yeah. but usually they do. You okay. know. All right. Uh, we have a question for, from somebody in the audience. Yeah, Bryce. Is there ever going to be a Sword Art Online 2 dubbed? There is, actually. It's fully dubbed and released. Um, I play Kirito as a girl. It's amazing. Wow. Well, so it's, it's the role I've been waiting for my whole life. Actually, part of, you talked about your training. Part of my training was prank calling female classmates in middle school as their female friends and getting away with it. Nice. So I've always wanted to play a character as a girl, and uh, Girito allowed me to do that. So. Yeah, I've been trying to find it dubbed every, everywhere. I can't find it. Yeah, you know, what happens is Toonami licenses these shows, and they don't want anyone else to have them. So they played it through on Toonami, and as soon as that license comes up, I'm sure someone like Netflix or Hulu or Amazon will snag it, and uh, more people can see it again. So fingers crossed that that's soon. Yeah. yeah. Spend all your time searching it on the internet. <laughs> it's actually out on the internet. And actually, I, I know there's a Blu-ray that's been released, because I own it. So you can definitely go find that. Go to Bryce's house to watch it with him. <laughs> and just come on by, yeah. We'll watch it together. He has a Blu-ray. <laughs> and uh, a Stingray. <laughs> Uh, speaking of you know the different projects that you work on, there's been so many you know in your list of accolades. Uh, of the voice acting projects that you have done, are there any that stand out above any others that kind of uh, as personal favorites? I know it's kind of a tough question to answer because of there's so many. Yeah, I loved working on Pokemon. I mean, I guess that's an obvious choice, but I had eight years on that show, and it was it's amazing to have uh, a job that goes for more than one season, for more than a couple episodes, you know? So to work on something and really be able to sink into it for eight years was incredible. Um, there's many shows that I love. I love everything I work on, really, but I don't always remember the names of everything. Because, <laughs> you know, it kind of piles together sometimes, yeah. and then if I see a list or a picture from it, I remember, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that or whatever, but some things doesn't mean I liked it less. Mm -hmm. I always cop out of this question. I, I can't pick one. Um, you know, there's. I, I've just been extremely fortunate to to work on a lot of projects that I'm a fan of, and that are just really awesome. Um, so I, I can't pick one. I mean, also a lot of my characters are just insane, and they exist somewhere <laughs> in my mind, and I don't right. want them to yell at me. Right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to another audience question. On the side. Oh, this this is for both you guys. I know you guys have been doing this for years, Bryce and I are as long as Veronica, but I mean, what advice would you give to the audience about trying to go and pursue a voiceover career? Um, I'll, I'll start. Yeah. So um, I guess like everyone will give you different advice. Some things that are kind of generally known is you put together a voice demo, and that's kind of like your business card as a voice actor. And when, when people put together a demo, I tell them do something that they're proud of, um, share it with friends, get feedback, keep improving it, make it the best that you can to reflect the voice actor you want to be. Um, and you use that to try to get a voice agent. The voice agent gets you auditions. And I think of auditions as buying lottery tickets um, because most of the time you're gonna hear no. Um, if you book one out of a hundred auditions, you're doing extremely well as a voice actor um, or an actor. Um, so don't let no stop you if it's something you really want to do. Um, I guess that's a, a good sort of yeah. starting ground. If you listen to voicebank.net, you can um, hear other people's demos so you get a better idea of kind of what the industry is hearing now. Um, I, I really think you want to Again, pack your suitcase with as many talents as you can. So get as much experience acting as you can. If you don't want to, if you don't love what you're doing, you should do something else. Um, being an actor takes a lot of time and it's hard. The highs are high, but the lows are really low. And there's a lot of lows. So um, you wanna be able to get as much experience with uh, that's class-wise and also work-wise. So maybe volunteering reading to kids in the library. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do just to get experience so you're in it. Work in places where you're meeting other people who are working in an industry that you want to be in. So you start making those connections. That's the best way to do it because you don't know who's going to be able to offer you a job at some point. So you kind of, um, you just have to jump in feet first. Thank you. You're welcome. Right, good. Next, next question. 
Yeah, kind of jumping into the connections thing, could yeah. you guys talk a little bit about like how the two of you collaborated with each other, like the connection between the two of you? Maybe Bryce, you have a story how you were inspired by Veronica. I mean, somehow. you like, inspire me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I grew up watching your work, um, so it, it's kind of surreal, like that. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean. Yeah. Um, my involvement in Pokemon is very minimal compared to hers. Um, I play, I don't know if you knew this, I play Red in Pokemon right. Origins, which is like the story that came before Ash's story. Right. But my story is told in four episodes. Oh, not right. not right. like eight years worth of episodes. So, um, but it was, it was so cool for me because I, you know, I grew up watching Pokemon and I never thought I'd be a part of that series because um, the majority of the recording took place in New York. Um, yeah, all of it. All for, of them. Yeah. Yeah, un the until Pokemon. I think Origins. Yep. Um, so for Origins, the creators at Pokemon wanted a totally different sound. It's it's just a different universe. Right. Um, so they came to LA and auditioned there, and I submitted an audition for Red and got cast. Okay. Um, yeah, we know each other from shows. Um, we both live in LA, but we've never seen each other in LA. Only yeah. on the road. Yeah, really. exactly. Yeah. So. Um, that's another thing where it's we're lucky to meet we and also other people we work with while we're on these crazy circus tours um, that you get to be friends with people and then kind of talk about maybe collaborating on other things and um, and so we've been able to to do that we've traveled a lot together yeah. but we've never actually worked together and if you're even on some so you can if you're doing cartoons you're dubbing which means you're matching the lip flap or you're doing prelay, which means you record it first and they draw it later. So even on, in dubbing, you are never in the booth with someone at the same time. So you can work with a number of people and never know they're on your show. I have the same situation with prelay shows where I'm not always in the booth with everyone. Sometimes we're in different states recording it. So even we could have been on the same show but never seen each other wow. or even known it. Wow. You know? okay. So um, yeah, so we, we kind of are figuring out that Speaking of circus, though, today is the last day of Ringling Brothers. Um, that's a big, I and think that's big. And I think they're doing, like, I think they're broadcasting it live on Facebook. I think the whole oh, really? the whole circus, I think, is it's, supposed to be broadcast live oh, on wow. Facebook today, I'm too. I'm against cruelty to animals, but I'm very sad about the passing of Ringling Brothers. But so, speaking of circus, <laughs> this is a different type of circus that we're on. We're only cruel to each other. Um, <laughs> does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That answers. Thank you, Doug. Sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Next question. We try. Sure. Uh, a question for both of you. Um, Bryce, you mentioned that a lot of your characters are a lot of screaming. And you hear stories about like Sean Schemmel passing out in the booth, like when he was voicing Goku. Um, are there any roles or any lines that you two can think of that were especially stressful or strenuous on your voices? I can think of a lot. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, the closest I've come to passing out in the boot, booth was during Sword Art Online. Um, Kirito, just the intensity of his screams are ridiculous. Um, you know that moment where like things, like the blackness starts coming into your vision and you, you know you're starting to pass out? Like that's what happened to the point where I touched the ground. Like I well, went down for a second yeah. um, during one of those screams. Um, but never went all the way out. Um, so that was one moment. Another moment was during uh, Call of Duty recording. I worked on Call of Duty Ghosts, and uh, a lot of my lines were like, supposed to be over gunfire, and like, while explosions are happening, like screaming over that. So when you're recording video games, the pace is a lot faster. So it's just a lot of screaming over and over and over, and I, I left that session like, yeah, that was awesome, guys. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, because you're also just doing reacts and, and also chunks of, of things that they'll put in the game somewhere. So yeah. it doesn't make any sense and you don't get a break. Yeah, you can't fake it either. Yeah. Like, you can tell when someone's faking those kind of screams. Like, military stuff, there's no way of just like, can I do that quieter? You know, they Stop! <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually did pass out also in the booth. Um, during uh, his and her circumstances. There's all that crazy, it's kind of when you're in it and the character has their mouth open for a long time and you're just like yelling as you're falling and then I think a normal person would breathe but maybe a cartoon person wouldn't and so you have to kind of figure out the best way to do that and I didn't 
and so I fell also, <laughs> um, which is sad uh, because you know you're there's just a window here, and you're recording like this, and then when you suddenly drop out, then I have to come back up. I'm fine, I'm fine. You know, like nobody knows where you went. It's just weird, and then you have to just keep going. Um, I, there's a lot of that. I do think when you um, study voice, you do learn techniques of how to shift your voice around, but some things are unavoidable. Um, when you're just, especially for a military thing, you're just screaming like that. You have to find a way to do it, protect your voice and be authentic. So it's always challenging. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Next question. Right. So this question is for Veronica. Um, when going into doing something like Pokemon, as like we can see now, there's been a lot of like adaptations of like, you know, comic books becoming TV shows. So there's like an easy source material that you can go back to and sort of identify how a character should be. But when you were doing Pokemon and voicing Ash, that was like right at the beginning, like sort of the advent of it. Um, how did you go about like taking preparations to to really get into that character where like the only source material that you really had at the time might have been like the script we were handed yeah exactly yeah. or like the games that were kind the of script unrelated we were handed. yeah the, the i don't even know that the games were really out that much and i certainly didn't have a ds at the time so um the it was just the script so it's just a, it's just basic acting where you're um you are just going off of what am i doing in the scene what's my objective what's the person before me saying the difficult part of that is that the lines aren't recorded and you've not seen the script before so you you have to learn how to kind of skim through quickly the script to see what the people are saying ahead of you so that when it comes to your line you know how to react and how to sound like you're talking and listening um, for that show in particular for most of the shows I work on I may do a little research online to kind of see what the animation style looks like as I'm auditioning really um, and and what's come before it but I don't have a lot of time to watch episodes or do really in-depth searches and kind of disappear into it for a while because I'm working on other things so most of my work is just in the moment in the, that's just to prove to you I'm serious yeah thank you you're welcome do you guys tend to find yourselves when you're at home when you, and you're not working, do you practice a lot in front of the mirror? Like, or if you just happen to be walking around your house, just practice voices as you're walking around? No. I talk to my dogs a lot in different voices mm -hmm. yeah. and drive them crazy. Okay. Um, and then I also practice voices when I'm watching TV so my wife doesn't watch TV with me anymore. Okay. There you go. <laughs> I work on accents a lot. But um, I definitely pick up, try to pick up accents from things. But I don't test out, like... Could I go higher here? Or what if I did my voice? I don't really do that okay. so much. I do it in an audition. I kind of, with something in particular in mind, I, I search through things there, but I don't do it sitting on my couch. Okay. All right. Uh, next not to say I never did in my life, but right now. <laughs> Just not right anymore. Much. Yeah. Um, this question is for Bryce specifically. I was wondering, for Attack on Titan, Titan Aaron, so like his screams, were they you or were they just completely computer generated? No, that's me. Mm -hmm. I'm itty bitty Aaron, I'm angsty teenage Aaron, and I'm Titan Aaron. <laughs> um, so it is adjusted by an engineer, but I am creating the noise. Um, I also did all the like, there's, there's moments in the show where he's almost running like he's a gorilla, because um, he's super angry and wants to get to kill someone faster, so he's I did these sounds like <laughs> it was awesome. I mean, I've never done that in the booth before, so it was. It was just really... at home while you're watching TV. <laughs> just to my yeah. dogs, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> chasing them <laughs> around my house. They yeah. love it. <laughs> <laughs> They're not intimidated at all. <laughs> well, thank you. No problem. Are you at the dog park? With <laughs> no, your dog has no friends. <laughs> my, my dogs are embarrassed. Yeah, They're yeah. just like, oh god, dad, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Uh, next question. Can you say your Can you say your favorite line from either the Seven Deadly Sins, Sword Art Online, or Attack on Titan, like in the voice, Bryce? This is for you. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm tiny, Bryce. I don't. <laughs> um, so from one of those shows. Um, wow, you're giving me lots of options. Um, I'll say one bad word. Can I curse? Yeah. Uh, you can. Curse. You can. Yes, 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 yes. Please. Yes. Oh, yeah. Do it. Okay. So it out. you said Blue Exorcist, right? 
That was one sure, of the options. Sure, why not? Okay. Um, <laughs> that wasn't one of the options. That's the one I'm going to pick, though. <laughs> Any line that you've ever said before. So, in Blue Exorcist, I play the, the son of Satan, and he does not like his father, who is Satan. And he says, I'm going to beat the shit out of Satan! That was a good line. I like it, too. I like how you come up with your own projects. You did say, oh, whatever, right? Yeah. I, I'm sorry, it was here so list. much. Yeah. A, B, C, not D. Well, I picked no, D. No, 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 e. E, e, E. This one. Yeah. Thank you for that question. That was, the, that was my best question so far, my most favorite. Best answer. From dog part to Satan. Dog part to Satan. Yes. I'm kind of adding on to a previous question. Okay. If you, like, when you voice act in an anime, do you ever watch, like, the original voice actors in, like, the Japanese version to dictate how you voice act the American voice? Uh, usually in the shows that I've worked on, no. Um, usually if there's a, some question about why something is a certain way in a scene, we'll refer to that. But usually the time is short that I don't, I don't even hear... I don't preview at all, I just record. So I, I rarely see much of the Japanese. Um, I've had a few occasions where I've been able to watch entire series that I know I'm gonna work on before I work on them. Wow. And I, I never copy the Japanese actor, that's not the goal. But um, I do take inspiration from some of the Japanese performances. Um, so Attack on Titan, I was a fan of the series before I even knew I was gonna be able to audition for the show. Um, and I really enjoyed Yuki Kaji's performance as Aaron. I mean, he's just crazy. Um, so I, I thought I would love to be able to act as this character as well. Um, and I, I, I tried to pull from his anger and, and add to mine. Um, but I definitely don't try to copy them. Um, that's, that's not the goal. But taking inspiration is okay. And also, it probably gave you more license to go further with it because you could see how, how far and how big he was. Yeah. So it, it freed you up, I, yeah. I imagine. What was really helpful is knowing how intense the show was. Yeah. Like, yeah. Get, it's, it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around how big those things are and how loud I was going to have to scream. So knowing that going in, I, I could mentally prepare. Because there's sometimes you choose a voice, but you don't know, like, you choose a voice, but you don't know how much that character is going to have to speak or the lengths are going to have to go. Yeah. So maybe you would make a slight vocal change or choice before you started. Yeah. So I think that's great that you could do that. Yeah, I was lucky that I that I watched the show before I got the audition. Yeah. Because I, that day that I that the audition came in, I went and bought soundproofing for my booth oh, at no home way. because my neighbors probably would have called the cops on me when they right. heard that audition. Right. So that saved me a, a phone call. That would have been bad. That's, I need some of, I have to talk to you about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just for my booth. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have pets. I don't have pets. I'm not making weird sounds at all. Yes? <laughs> this is for Grace. Uh, can you do the voice for Love Home? Sure. So, um, let me warn you. Okay. I'll, I'll give a caveat before I do here. this. Just from here. So, the re this request is from a show called Seven Deadly Sins. Um, it's a really fun show on Netflix. I play this character named Meliodas, who's this little overpowered blonde guy, but I also play the most annoying character in the show, whose name is Lovehelm. He's this little referee, and I'll describe him for you. <laughs> He's got this, this silver helmet on. He has this, like, it almost looks like a red drape over him. He's about this tall and has little squiggly arms. And nice. this is what he sounds like. I won't even do this into the microphone because it's so loud and annoying. <laughs> Sorry. Oh no! Let the fight begin! Oh gosh. <laughs> so, That's good though. That's a, a, really great. A quick story about Love Helm. <laughs> Um, I, I got cast as Meliodas, and I, I was watching the show in Japanese, another opportunity that I had to do that, and this character came up, and I'm like, oh, that's terrible. So I copied that voice, yeah. and I'm like, I might be able to do this. So I asked the uh, casting director and producer, can I send you another audition? And she's like, you're the lead, what are you, what are you talking about? I'm like, no, no, just trust me. Yeah. And I, I went home and, and practiced and, and sent that in and got an email back saying, maybe we can make this work. Yeah. So after that happened, I kept practicing the voice 
at home, and my wife was very pregnant with our daughter. And she, I was practicing, and she comes in and says, if you do that one more time, I'm having this baby right now. So I had to stop practicing. But that is a great example of how you know, as an artist, you're always working on things. Yes. You don't just go, oh, now I'm, you know, this is fine, I can just rest. You're always seeking things out, always trying to make yourself be better and improve. So, I mean, I think that's the biggest takeaway here, yeah. is that you never just settle. You always grow as yeah. an actor. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this question is for both of you. If you could choose, like, one character that you've played, uh, to become, like, you're in that universe, you're, you are them, what, who would you choose? Oh my gosh, could you imagine? I mean, we all live in a Pokemon world, but do you want to live in a Pokemon world? I'm not sure. Maybe. I like wearing sneakers. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Do you have, would you be someone? I mean, I got to play uh, this character named Sultan, who's this little baby tiger that Jasmine <laughs> yes. owns for Disney. Yep. Um, and it's in this game called Disney Princess Palace Pets. And all you do is you yeah. see Sultan the tiger and you comb his hair and you blow dry his hair and he just sits there and looks cute. That's nice. I'll be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> I think I would like to take things from, like the idea of being able to travel with just a backpack with a spare change of underwear and I, I don't even know, not even knowing how to cook. And to do that, but then also to be able to do some magic, you know, other characters have that. And I'd love to have a combination of all of that. In a way, my life is already a kooky thing. Because from, I go to work and I'm in these made up worlds all day long, whether it's recording an audiobook or doing cartoons or even working on a language program. I'm in this whole imaginary world anyway that, that's here. And then I'm traveling and meeting people and finding out about their lives. and. And I just, it's already kind of a cartoon. So um, I'm not sure if I could choose to be another person. I'm kind of happy with myself at the moment, <laughs> thanks to you all. Thank you. Thank thanks. Uh, Bryce. Yes? Uh, I was wondering what your favorite line to say as Aaron was, and also if it was challenging for you to have to do all those gritted teeth lines for him where I was upset. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he gets crazy angry and there's moments where like he's kind of hurting himself. So at, I know you haven't seen it, so this probably sounds very strange, but there's a moment where he bites his hand and I actually bit my hand so hard that I left a bruise on my hand. But it sounded awesome. Right, but you sometimes great. you have to do something to get into character. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, don't try that at home. Don't, yeah, please don't do that. Um, who has not seen Attack on Titan? A couple people. A couple people. A couple people. Uh, don't listen to what I'm going to say because it's a spoiler. So, yeah, cover your ears now. Um, so, Aaron turns into one of them. Um, he's like inside one of their stomachs and he like busts out of his head and like punch this little baby titan and then he's like stepping on this other one's neck it's very violent and he goes get up get up let me kill you again and again and again that's a good moment <laughs> that is a good one thank you all right yeah, he's crazy you're really scary right he's kind of crazy you're very scary uh we only have a couple minutes left but there's only two people in line so we'll see if we can get through both of these you questions mean we should before. shorten our answers no, no, i hear, no, no, I hear no, what you're saying that's not what i'm saying at all i'm just saying we'll, we'll cut the line it, every it, it. we talk I too much it. i okay. didn't say that at all you're voice actors you're supposed to talk with our voice enjoy hearing okay this one's for bryce my friend asked me have you ever seen Sword Art Online abridged? Uh, I, I get asked that every single convention now. And I, you know, I think I'm gonna have to break down and just watch it. I think I'm gonna live stream when I watch it. Uh, that's that's that getting very personal. <laughs> yes, hey. <laughs> so thank you, I will watch it soon.